All right, kids, I feel like a good portion of my parenting is trying to give you more than I had growing up, which isn't hard, and I'm doing so, and I think I resent you for it. In wanting you to have opportunities that I didn't get, part of that means your mother and I getting you to what we think of as a great school. That's high on the report card performance index, where if you wanted to take robotics class, you could. Would you like to have that exclusive food truck for lunch? Do that. You want to play any number of weapon sports? You? You bet not. Unfortunately, getting you to all of these things meant we needed to live in the suburbs. And in order for you to take advantage of resources that I didn't get, I'm taking you through stuff that I didn't go through at your age. I mean, I didn't grow up around all this whiteness. It was thrust upon me my junior year of high school. That shirt is tight, son. Man, a lot of white people wear FUBU. In the land where Range Rovers are the chariots for the American dream and black men refuse to give me the nod, you will be someone's only black friend. I mean, when I look at class photos from field trips and assemblies, it's easy to find your caramel color cells amongst your classmates. Your pictures may even be on school promotional images to show that the district is diverse. Amongst your classmates, there might be a kid who's really into your hair or may think you look like any number of black celebrities, even though you really don't, but that's their only black frame of reference. Or there could be someone who wonders about your choice of hobbies when seeing you in invention camp or if you're playing lacrosse. Actually, that person might be me. Look, friendships are pertinent and it's important to make real connections no matter what another person's race is, which can come by similar interests, backgrounds, and commonalities. But in America, minorities can find a certain amount of comfort and understanding in and among people with your same skin color. So, 10, this is usually why my ears perk up when you talk about your friend Malik. And 7, when you say something about that kid Jabari, you know, I'm assuming, I mean, come on. What I'm about to say may not apply to you now, but as you get older and progress through grade school, it will not be your job to educate your white friends about racism. If you provide any insight, it will be as a courtesy, not a necessity. However, I need to let you know right now that you're no one's token or license to say the N-word. Just because someone likes you doesn't mean they like black people. Friendship with you doesn't equate to someone not being racist. I'm going through this stuff too, just a grown-up version. I mean, adults seem to think that because there are more interracial marriages now, racism is less of an issue. But these same people don't even like their in-laws. So I'm supposed to believe that because, say, a white man marries a black woman, he not only isn't racist, but he likes black people too? No, it doesn't work like that. This topic didn't come out of nowhere, and the suburbs didn't come by accident. We've talked about how the suburbs got to be this way through intention preferences and policies which led to the average white person still living in neighborhoods that are 72% white. Also, whether by choice or circumstances, schools are more segregated now than they were in the 60s, and three or four white people only have one black friend. And that's where you come in, kids. You go to school with their kids, and we share a neighborhood. There aren't a lot of black and brown kids to go around, and you may only have one black friend, too, which could be something you deal with until we move or you get out on your own. Next week, we're going to talk about college and the choice between going to a primarily white institution like I did at The Ohio State University versus an HBCU, Historically Black College and University. Networking and identity will be a part of it. With all of this, I'm just hoping you can find yourselves. Stay faithful to your art and culture and people, and we're going to be all right. That shirt is tight.